Welcome to the introductory video on the fighting rifle series dealing with this particular rifle. This video I'm going to go over the intent that I have behind this series of videos and I'm going to talk a little bit about this rifle right here that you see in front of you. Now as far as the intent goes, the intent is for law-abiding citizens, law enforcement and military professionals to sit down, discuss the techniques being used, debate if they feel a need to debate, and for those of you that are a little bit new to this type of rifle handling to possibly learn from it, keep in mind what I'm teaching and what I'm going over in these videos is nothing groundbreaking, it's nothing new. A lot of you guys that are old hats to the tactical world will recognize a lot of this stuff. Also keep in mind, in the tactical world there is more than one way to do things. So as we go through the series, Keep that one thought in mind. If you see something that I'm doing that you're not doing, feel free to discuss it and debate it, but keep in mind there is more than one way to do things. If everybody did the same thing the same way all the time, then it would be a pretty drab world and everybody would be pretty damn predictable. Now, along with that, for everybody watching this, regardless if you're a professional or if you're very uh, new to the world of firearms, Training with a live firearm and live ammunition is a very dangerous act in itself. These videos are for informational purposes, but if you decide to go out and practice what I am doing in this video, keep in mind you alone are responsible for your actions. I'm not responsible for your actions. Your family or friends are not responsible for your actions. You alone are responsible for the safe handling of your firearm. I highly urge you to not leave the gate running, so to speak. Don't go out and think you can do super fast drills right off the bat and think you're going to hit the mark and shoot like a pro because if you do that, you have a high risk of hurting yourself or others. Firearm safety is paramount. No matter what you do, safety, safety, safety. So again, realize that. These videos are for informational purposes only, but if you decide to try these acts, you need to make sure firearm safety comes first all the time. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about why I chose this particular rifle. This rifle right here is a civilian version of an M4. The only difference between this rifle and a military-grade M4 is the twist rate of the barrel, which the military grade is a 1 in 7 twist, this is a 1 in 9 twist. The length of the barrel, this is a 16 inch, and most M4s you see in the military are 14.5 inches. And the fact that this M4 does not have the burst capability or full auto capability like an M4A1. Being that this is a civilian model, it only has semi-automatic fire. The reason I chose the M4 style of rifle is because of how light and handy it is. It is one of the most common AR-15s out on the market. It comes in extremely light, it's extremely compact, but for being as compact as it is, it can still hit out to ranges of 500 meters or more. Now this rifle, with a 20 round magazine, you're looking at right at about 7.5 pounds loaded. The folded uh, length of this rifle is right around 32 inches and the extended length with the rear stock all the way extended out is right about 36 inches. With the 16 inch barrel, 1 and 9 twist weight, you are talking right about 3,000 feet per second as far as velocity of the ammunition. The ammunition I'll be using will be, for the most part, the XM193 5.56 round ball ammo and I'll also be using a little bit of the 62 grain M855 steel penetrator ammo. Uh, that'll be a little bit later on in the video series. This particular rifle is a Bushmaster upper with a stag arms lower. Everything is pretty plain Jane. The only thing that I did to this rifle, there are two things actually that I did to the rifle. The first thing is I put in a crane o-ring for the extractor. And the reason I did that is because the extractor can be the cause of a decent amount of failures and double feeds in an AR system. So 
for the cost of the O-ring, which is uh, I bought four of them, including shipping, it cost me two dollars. So I've got enough O-rings to last the life of this rifle. In fact, one O-ring is going to almost last the life of, its, of this rifle. So that's just one little add-on I did just to help with reliability a little bit. Another add-on, and this is more of a comfort thing, is on the bottom of the trigger guard, I have an ergo gapper. For those of you that shoot the AR a lot, there's normally a area of dead space between the trigger guard and the pistol grip. That will rub your finger raw after a while, uh, especially after a long period of field use. So that ergo gapper gives you a nice soft rubber place to put in there, and over time you will really appreciate it. The sight that I have on it, I'm sticking with just iron sights. I have the A2 style rear sight, as you can see here. The reason I went with this and not with a more lightweight and compact uh, flip-up rear sight is because this rear sight, it's a lot more durable and I still can easily engage out to 500 meters. Now there are a few flip-up sights like the Matex that will give you that uh, bullet drop compensation, so, so to speak. So where you can still engage out to 500 meters pretty easily. But I decided to stick with this because, well, one, it came with the rifle. It was already there. It's a very robust sight, and it works. Other than that, everything else is pretty much stock on this rifle. I did not make any changes, nor do I intend to make any changes for this video series. You notice the magazine is a 20-rounder. The reason I went with 20-rounders is my personal preference. This rifle is light and compact, so I want to keep it compact. A 20-rounder, I think, isn't shown enough love these days. For a lot of situations, a 20-rounder is plenty enough firepower for you. Plus, the magazine is compact enough you can throw it in a regular jeans, uh, jean pants pocket, or a jacket pocket, or a shirt pocket. So, I like that with this particular rifle. That's just my choice. If you choose to use 30-rounders, that's completely up to you. Uh, that's going to be pretty much your preference. The sling, standard GI nylon sling. I'm not going anything crazy with the sling, just the standard uh, two-point sling. Now this rifle, I'm going to be doing a lot of things close quarters and in intervals all the way out to 500 meters. The rated uh, of max effective range for this rifle is 600 meters. It'll go a little bit farther than that, but pretty much this little 223 round is out of gas at about 500 600 meters so that's about the extreme of the effectiveness of this round I'll show you what this rifle is, is capable of and the only way you can get a lighter combination than what you see right here is if you went with the pencil barrel this barrel is a government profile it's a little bit heavier there's a profile of barrel out there that's more of the car profile it's a little bit lighter they refer to them as pencil barrels That'll save a little bit in weight, and if you get rid of the A2 style rear sight and you throw up a real, like uh, possibly like a uh, Magpul rear sight, that's an all polymer rear sight, flip up rear sight, you'll lose a little bit of the accuracy that you'll get out of this style of sight, but if you're looking for the ultimate lightweight M4 profile carbine, then that's one route you can take. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stop this video. Uh, I hope to begin shortly. My work schedule is a little bit crazy sometimes, so the videos are going to come out as soon as I can make them, but there's not going to be a set schedule on when they're coming out. Again, the key points I want you to take away from this series is number one, be safe. If you decide to try any of these things that I'm going to do, be safe at all times. Firearm safety is paramount. That doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's a handgun, shotgun, musket, AR-15, it doesn't matter. You need to be safe and you need to know what you're doing. If you feel unsafe or unsure around a firearm, do not go out to the range and try these things. Now another thing to take away is this particular series I'm sticking with simplicity. Simplicity is usually the core definition of tactical. I even had it put on the buttstock here. 
So if you're looking at this rifle later on in the series and you see this, that'll serve as a reminder. Skill and will wins the fight. That is definitely true. Technology has a role to play. Technology does make things easier. But don't ever feel undergunned if all you have is this very basic rifle. Because this rifle will work, for you, will work for you from point blank range out to 500 meters very efficiently. Don't rely too much on technology. Rely on your training. Get yourself trained. Learn to work this trigger that a lot of people hate. Learn to work the iron sights that a lot of people hate. Learn to operate the system first and become a master of that system. Then if you so choose, go ahead and upgrade with whatever, with whatever you want. A lot of you that follow my channel have seen my full-size AR. That's got the fancy ACOG and vertical grip and all that cool gear. It's neat and I like the way that rifle handles. It certainly makes it easy to engage targets out to far distances with that setup, especially with that ACOG. But I tell you what, it's not needed. You can fight successfully with a bare bones approach if that's all you can do. So all right, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you kind of got an understanding of what I'm doing, why I'm using this rifle. And uh, I hope to see you guys in my later videos. Keep the comments civil. Again, there's more than one way to do things. And again, have fun and learn from each other. Thanks for watching and stay safe.